Now the next few videos have to deal with web apps as well. But instead of looking at subdomains, we're going to look at what a website is built with. And that's a good indicator here of built with. So let's go out to Google and we're going to just search built with. And we're going to go right to builtwith.com. And let's take a look at what this does. So let's just search tesla.com, for example. We'll do a lookup. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can read it. And what this does is this goes out and it looks at what type of tech Tesla is running. Now it gives all this stuff that it can see Google Analytics, Salesforce. That's great. But it also tells us the widgets that are running. You can see it is part of Bug Crowd, Log Me In, Twitter. OK, it's got these language things here, but what we're really after is what kind of frameworks it might be running on. So it says here that it's running on PHP. It has Adobe Enterprise Cloud. OK, that's interesting. Uh, it's got CDN, the Content Delivery Network. Interesting. It utilizes Stripe. OK, we can scroll through this. Looks like it might be written in Drupal. That's an indicator there. And this is a big website, so it's got a lot. Look at all the information here. And it might be a lot to track down. So with this, with a big website like this, there's a better way, I think. Now, Built With is a great, great resource. But I think there's some other stuff out there that might help us a little bit better. So let's go out to Google as well, and let's search for a tool called Wapalyzer, just like this. And we're going to use it for Firefox. So it should pull this up here and we'll click on the first one. And go ahead and just select add to Firefox. Select add and now it will appear. So now we have Wapalyzer. Let's go back to Tesla. And you see this little guy here in the corner. We're going to click on this. We're going to accept it. And now we get a little bit of information as to what's going on. Not as much information as built with, but I actually like Wapalizer a lot more because it kind of just gives you an indication right away with what's going on. Now, Wapalizer is more of an active type of reconnaissance. I only say that and I don't necessarily believe it, but it's because we do have to interact with the website. Now, we're not doing any type of scanning. We're just going out to the website like a normal user would. And to me, it's still kind of passive because we're not doing anything that would be out of the norm. So here we can see the content management system is running on Drupal. We can see the programming language is running PHP. Those are both identified with built with as well. Now, why is this important to you're telling me? Well, it's important because if we know that it's running with PHP or Drupal, there might be a vulnerability within those. A lot of times when we have this, let's see if we go to this website, you can see PHP is running. We get a lot of things and we get version numbers. So look at the Wapalizer website. You see that it's running on an operating system of Ubuntu. It's got a programming language of PHP. The web server is Nginx with 1.14.0 version number. Okay, it can tell that it's running on Amazon Web Services as a platform. It's got all kinds of information here. It's got the payment processing. It's running Google Analytics. So see the type of information that can come through. A lot of times you'll see things like jQuery and other type of libraries here and the version numbers as well. Now you take those version numbers and you do enumeration on them and you try to find any type of vulnerabilities that might happen there. And the more information that we can gather on a client, on a website, whatever it is, the better off we are. So when we're gathering information on Tesla, OK, now we know the content management system is written in Drupal, the programming language PHP. Is that going to lead to an exploit? Maybe, but you don't know where it's going to come up in the future. So this type of information gathering is great. Now, one more thing that we can use. We've got something built into our machine. Let's go out to the terminal and we can take a look at it. So we've got a tool called what web just like this and hit enter on it. And if we look at the syntax, all we need is to specify a target. So we enter the URL, host name, IP address, or nmap format. So we just say what web URL. So let's give it a go. We'll say what web. And we'll just say HTTPS 
tesla.com. And it is a redirect, so it might not pull down everything for us here. So it did pull down an IP address. It gave us a redirect. I don't know if there is a follow redirection op option here, um, but what we'll do is we will just say something instead. We'll say like tesla.com instead of 443 and see if that does anything different. And it didn't. So it does give us some information in here. It's not as pretty of a layout, but it is a tool that is built into Kali Linux for us. So look, we can pull down Drupal 8. We didn't know what kind of Drupal it was running on. Now we know it's Drupal 8. We see that it's running PHP 7.3.7. .7. That's identification too that we didn't have previously. So using more tools to our advantage gives us more information. And we can pull down the headers that it has here. And you see they have different types of headers, which we're not going to get into this quite yet. When we get into the web app portion of this, we'll talk more about headers. But this is just yet another thing that we need to look at. And we pulled down the IP address as well. So a little bit more information that we can gather here and just keep going from this. So that is it. Utilize the resources around you to gather information. We could utilize resources that go out and scan a specific web page like this. We can go and utilize a resource such as Wappalizer that you just visit the web page and you can see what's running on there or a website like builtwith.com where we just don't even navigate to the website. We just type it in and it does all the work for us and we can pull down all this information, which is by far the most information out of these three tools. So utilize all the resources available to you and you will have much advantages when it comes to pen testing and your enumeration skills. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you over in the next one.